It is the 5,016th year of the Union era. Human civilization stretches across the Orion arm of the Milky Way galaxy. Thousands of inhabited worlds and trillions of lives. This grand diaspora is linked, although sparsely, by a network of paracausal blink gates. Enormous megastructures powered by a significant fraction of the output of entire stars and capable of instantaneous transmission across space-time between any two terminals. And nearly all these worlds prosper under a single banner, that of Union, a great and noble post-capitalist democratic confederation that dreams to one day usher all of humanity into post-scarcity utopia. But that dream is distant, if even achievable at all. Only a handful of core worlds truly approach the abundance Union aspires to for all their citizens, while the vast human diaspora struggles to survive in a hostile galaxy. And Union itself has made so many compromises on these ideals, that some wonder if it really intends to achieve them at all. From the continued existence of the corporal states, polities entirely bent towards the extraction of profit, under Union's banner, to the imperialist depredations enacted by Union subject states like Harrison Armory and the Carrick and Trank Baronies, with little intervention from Union. This is the reality of building a democracy from the ashes of empire, of forging a dream from the blood of billions shed to make it a reality. Reunion was not always so noble, so democratic. Scarcely 500 years ago, within living memory for the long-lived people of the Union era, Union was subject to the authoritarian whims of the anthro-chauvinist Second Committee, a vast imperial project responsible for the colonization, flattening, and genocide of countless indigenous peoples throughout the Orion Arm, in the name of a unified, breed, homogenous humanity, bent entirely towards the goal of ruthless, indefinite expansion across the stars. The now ruling Third Committee came to be from the ashes of the Second, from a bloody civil war that lasted over 50 years and claimed billions of lives. The Second Committee was cast down and the Third rose to power, determined to amend the sins of their hated predecessor. Yet, repairing the damage of 2,000 years of empire is not a task that can be done in a day, and indeed, one that never seems to end. The future is not yet written. The coin tossed is yet to fall. Humanity may yet live to see the utopian aspirations of the Third Committee's founders realized, or it may find itself living in the shadow of broken dreams. This future will be written not by the hands of a handful of heroes in some great climax, but by the actions of many in many theaters across the vast, intractable domain of human space. One such theater will soon begin the performance. One toss will finally resolve. In the chaos of the Civil War, many distant worlds among the diaspora were simply forgotten. Records destroyed by spiteful SECCOM bureaucrats or lost in the burning of archives. The mission of rediscovering and recontacting them is of urgent importance to the Third Committee. Crescidium is one such world. A tiny colony that saw a massive influx of population at the time of the Civil War, swelling with refugees fleeing the conflict, and officials seeking to avoid judgment for their complicity in SETCOM's crimes. Yet, a SETCOM holdout, it is not. The Civil War was five centuries ago, and Cursidium has had its own history since, marked by its own revolutions and civil wars. Now it is a patchwork of independent states, dominated by the ongoing Cold War between the Leandrin States Alliance and the Vestan Sovereignty. Thankfully, that Cold War was already beginning to thaw by the time Union first recontacted Presidium five years ago. It has dispatched a number of successful diplomatic missions since. This is the third such mission. The Union Navy Abro-class light carrier UNSCV Rio Grande and its wings of Marines and mech pilots, mostly fresh from the academies, 
have accompanied Union Ambassador Nilan Banerjee as an escort. They do not expect to have to fight. They are there to demonstrate Union's industrial and technological might more than anything. Might that would be available to assist Crisidium in its development should its nations petition to rejoin Union. This visit is expected to be as uneventful as the previous two, but expectations are not always met.